Hello and welcome back to tutorial number 7. Is this the right time to talk about combat takeoff and landing during flight training? Maybe not in the first view. But there is another more vital aspect that needs to point at any time. Flying a helicopter is not only moving an aircraft from one place to another, which is only a matter of training. More critical is that flying a helicopter is much more than an airplane a constant decision making process. By the way, I'm not a military pilot and never flown even combat-like missions. But it's not that difficult to see the differences. What is the difference between a normal takeoff, normal landing and his combat counterpart? The answer is for sure pretty simple and maybe surprising for you. But first, let's start by reviewing normal landing and takeoff in an unusual landing area. Even in a helicopter, you most often take off and land on an airfield or a helipad. But of course you can land wherever you want if there is a reason for and no law prevents you from doing so. In this case we are looking for a more unusual place to land. First we overfly the intended landing area and get a closer look from above. If there is any obstacle or person or vehicle moving. Then we do at least one high recon observing for wind direction and speed as well as a suitable approach path. There are power lines west and north close to the LC. To the south and west are building as well. Northeast and east are only a few commercial buildings and a solar power station with many free space. So with no or calm wind an approach from northeast or east may be the best decision. As usual, we are start our pattern and turn into downwind. After turning final, it is a piece of cake performing a normal approach. To get out of this place, we turn around 180 degrees and take off the same way back. We already knew there is no power line and lots of space in case of an emergency landing. Again, we do a normal takeoff. We are using the space available to accelerate through translational lift and enter a decisive climb. So we gain speed and altitude quickly within the borders of the dead man's curve. So in case of an engine failure during takeoff, there is enough speed and altitude to perform a safe auto rotation. This time we add 50 knots wind to the equation, very well indicated by the smoke trail deflected to the north. Our goal is still a standard approach to land under the actual conditions. So we have to make a decision. Wind is always a significant factor during the approach, especially if your reference indicates strong wind. You should always plan your approach as much as possible into the wind. We already knew the area and we knew there are power lines when we approach from the north. We also fly a steeper approach than typical to assure we have the L set inside, all the way down to the ground. We pass the power line over one of his poles, 
because this is for sure the highest point of the structure, while we may miss a possible ground wire cable tied between the top of the towers. While reducing airspeed close to zero, we monitor the rate of descent at the VSI carefully. Before you come to a full stop, the aircraft's nose has to point into the wind for stabilizing purposes. A few feet above the ground is the wrong place to realize your tail rotor thrust may not be strong enough to counteract the crosswind, and your aircraft starts spinning by surprise. Departing may look like an easy decision, straight out into the wind. But be aware, strong winds may be built up strong downdrafts on the backside of high buildings. So it would be wise to hover a few feet sideways. In the end, a standard approach or a normal takeoff is the combination of safety and practicability. Avoid unnecessary risks just because something looks like an easy task. It may not be that easy at all. But what is a combat landing or takeoff? To answer that question, we add some enemy to the scene and make our landing zone a hot or possible hot LC. Flying into a hot LC at altitude may not be the best idea. You get spotted early and most likely they open fire very soon. They can follow your maneuvers and wait for you. There is no way to fly a recon, observing the LC in advance, without the risk of getting shut down before you even attempt to land. On the long final, you may avoid incoming ground fire by maneuvering left and right. But in the end, you are slow easy to calculate the target. A combat landing is therefore nothing more than a risk assessment. Which is more likely? A crash due to non-compliance with standard procedures or to get shut down by the enemy? As earlier you get spotted and as longer you stay in the hot zone, as more likely you get shut down. So fast and low is your life insurance. If you follow standard procedures, you get shut down and die for sure. Go in as quick and low as possible. It will be hard for the enemy to see you in the first place, but on the other hand, you have no visual to the LC during the approach. There are also some obstacles you have to overcome, but at least you will land into the wind. Okay, we should rethink this again. Don't care about the wind. Use the way with the most power and fewer obstacles. Stay as low and as fast as long as possible. Reduce your airspeed in the very last moment. No time for a nice hover landing. When on the ground, count on three and let's get out. Who cares about the red lines? There are time limits you may and should use. TOT or EGT for example. You may exceed the first red line for up to 20 minutes if necessary. Talk may be also exceeded for a couple of seconds without damaging anything. A different thing is the low RPM warning horn. If it comes on, you should react immediately by lowering the collective regardless of your altitude. So back to our main question. What is a combat landing or takeoff? It is an action willingful ignoring safety precautions and procedures in the attempt to survive the mission. 
a well-calculated decision about what helps and what is most likely harmful and thereby needed to avoid. But it would be best if you had a lot of training to do so. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel and support us in our work. If you have questions or comments, please let me know in the comments below. See you next time.